Hey, what's happening? And today I'm doing a video on projection camera mapping in Lightwave. I wanted to do a video about this for quite some time. I was inspired to do this, like always, by seeing another video. And this one, though, is, was done a long, long time ago by Ivan B. And unfortunately, I think he jumped ship to Maya. This is camera mapping from projection. And it's it's a little out of date. And I have to say, it's a little bit of a challenge to create the scene. There is some wonkiness that can happen. It's just one of those things, the more you practice it, the better off you'll, you'll get at it. But the cool thing about it is this actually relates to a lot of effects that I want to create in Lightwave and it's these 3D environments where it's truly 3D so rather than modeling an entire environment in 3D I can get a two-dimensional picture and project it onto this texture so let me just go in here real fast I'll show you what I mean and if I go to perspective view here you get a little better look at it it's not that hard to get started but there are some little kind of things and like I said it can get it can get wonky on you so you basically create these two polygons and then you got you have two cameras a projection camera that acts like a projector just like in a movie theater and then a rendering camera that renders a scene and it's the rendering camera that allows you to move through the scene and actually create that sense of a 3d motion so like if i go back to the camera 2 which is my rendering camera you can see you can actually move through the scene which is awesome so you can create fashion a pretty amazing world and there's a lot of cool stuff you can do like you can actually make a cloth effects here and add bumps on the ground and there's a whole bunch of things you can do the point of this video is just to kind of show you the basics and to show you how it works in 2019 instead of 2014. so this is what i kind of messed around with last night that's what we're going to do so i'm going to just start from scratch i'm going to start from the very beginning i might not end up looking exactly like this but you'll see where we go i'm just going to clear the whole scene i'll go back into perspective view here now i'm going to jump over into modeler this is one of the, one of the gotchas that i found was so what we're going to do is we're just going to make a box click and drag this and it should be a fairly good sized box i don't have an exact dimension but the bigger the better you know it doesn't hurt to make it too big so let's see here i'm trying to turn here and get a better perspective on it yeah so i want to drag this out like that that should be big enough okay and then i'll hit enter and then I'm gonna hit F2, and then I'm gonna hit F3, and then I'm gonna hit A. And then that gets the whole thing centered and resting on the ground and perfect. So now I'm just gonna come over here to Polygon, and I'm just gonna click here, hold down Shift, click this, these four sides. Let me get this other side here. And then we've got this, but we can't see the normals, so you gotta hit F to flip them so you can see everything. Now all we're gonna do is we gotta subdivide this. That's one of the things that I learned is that if you don't subdivide these planes, the projection will get really weird and it won't project correctly. So that's why you gotta subdivide it. Cause I did it without subdividing and then I, I realized. So here we're gonna hit Shift D and we wanna do faceted and we go okay and we're going to do this a couple times so do one more just for good luck and that's all we got to do in modeler so we're just going to save this save object and we'll call this wall 10. what we're going to do is we're just going to send it over to layout and that's it folks we're done have a great date now <laughs> there's a little bit more to it so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and project our image our 2d image now the one of the things there is that the image that you choose you should really choose one that has a horizontal a horizon line in the image because you're going to want to hide that horizon line in this corner right here so you'll have the sky up here and the ground up here in ivan's original video he makes these separate planes but i found that that didn't work out very well and it's better that it just be one plane but the key is that your image have a horizon line and then you just tweak it into this corner right there to hide it because there might be lighting differences between this plane and this plane the bottom the floor and the wall so anyway we're going to surface editor let's see while we're here we might as well just turn off all of this because we don't want our so just zero out all your settings here we don't want the surface reflecting or doing anything weird to modernize this for 2019 we go into edit node graph and we go to image we'll type in image here an image pops up and we double click this and there's our image and now we just come in here and we just got to go load our image and like i said that to me is really the key of the whole this whole exercise i got a bunch of weird stuff on here right now okay here we go it's this one and now there's just a couple settings that we're going to turn off one thing is to come in here and note the size of your image so it's 51 84 388 51 84 8 388 hopefully i'll remember that 51 <laughs> 84 388 don't watch me forget okay so we're going to turn off pistol blender 
We're going to set this to reset. We're going to set this to reset. We're going to change this to front projection and fixed projection. And our reference camera is our projector is our camera. And that is all of our settings there. And then all we got to do is plug this into color. This is where you'll see some stuff now. Let me switch here into texture shaded. So now you see our image projecting on from our camera. If I click on my camera, I'm on my camera right here. This is projecting. Now, one of the reasons it's looking kind of out of size is that we got to change the resolution. So we're on the camera. We're going to change this to, what is it? 5184. See, I still do have a memory. And then it's 3888. 3888. So we want it to be the same resolution. The kind of the trick in Ivan's tutorial, he shifts the size of this, he stretches this, but I would rather say to just adjust the camera rather than resizing your thing here. So you can see as we punch in, we're pretty close there. The other thing you can do is you can also mess with the focal length a little bit. So let's see, let's narrow this down our focal length there and let's see where that gets us. Because we want, we do want some of this spilling on to let me try this so this is where i say you got to just kind of play around with things so you might have to adjust your focal length to get this where you want it and that's the whole trick of this whole thing is getting this image to project onto so let me just get in a little closer here it's kind of hard to see but we want let me move this we want this image this is going to be our horizon line, that line right there. And we want that right at the, the base. So you can see we're off a little bit. So if I come over here on my camera controls, I can just pull back here a little bit. And then the other thing I can do is let's say I'm right about there. I can pitch it. So I'm going to pitch the camera down and see what a difference that makes. Now I can, I'm just eyeballing this. You see where it's right over here is where I'm looking right now, right there. So I'm just pitching the camera down to kind of get it. And then I'll bank this is what I'm going to do to try to line it up. You just got to position things and play around until you get your horizon line in that corner. However you get there, I don't want to tell you there's just this one way to do it because there's probably a lot. So I'm going to say when you get the image, like filling most of the wall and something like that. So you just have to play around with your camera and you have a lot of flexibility. So I can see in that position right there, I'm going to pitch it down a little bit more, the camera, so that my, I can see it spilling onto the, let me get really close in on this and see. So the only thing I'd say is it needs to be banked a little bit so I can see a little difference here. So, and you'll see the problem is there's a, there'll be a lighting difference between the wall and the floor is the problem. So it's going to look weird if you don't line up the horizon line, the lighting, you'll see a line going across because the ground plane is different than this wall plane, but you can play with lighting and actually balance it out sometimes, but sometimes you'll see the, the difference in lighting between the two planes. So that was one of the things that was curious to me. So I'm going to, I'm going to bank this and just, you know, do the best you can tweak it and mess around with it all day long. Okay. So now here we go. We're pretty much there, I think, for what we want to do. So now we basically have created this 3D scene by projecting a 2D image onto it. So we've got our ground surface here and we've got our sky surface here. Once we get it set to your satisfaction, then what you want to do is you want to come into the scene editor and you want to just lock it down because you don't want to be messing with it anymore. So now that's basically our whole scene right there. And then you can do whatever you want to do. So now what we all we have to do is bring in a rendering camera. So we're going to go into camera and make a new camera and I'll just call it render camera. Okay. And now we've got a second camera. Now here's a test. If you move this camera and the image, this image moves, something's wrong because this image should be locked onto these planes pretty much. So now if I'm on the render camera and I move, I can fly through the scene or whatever I want to do, my movement. If you move this, the render camera and the image is moving, something's wrong. So one thing could be wrong is if you go into surface editor, you might want to double check that this didn't switch on you. You want the reference camera to be the projection camera. I found that out the hard way. Now what we can do is if we go into camera view and we go to our render camera and we go to it's easier to move around in OpenGL. So now this is our camera. If I come in here, you can see I, you know, that's one thing I like about 3D. It's basically your own movie studio, and <laughs> but you don't have to spend a lot of money and you don't have a lot of overhead. Now I could see that maybe I can fix this up a little bit there if I wanted to adjust it. I'm going to leave that for another day. You can adjust that, but I think it's pretty good. I'm limited in where I can move the camera, but I actually got a lot of room to move in here if I, once I start zooming in and stuff. So I'm on my render camera now and you can see I can move through the scene. Once you're at this level, I should probably save this scene before I get too carried away. So I'm just going to call this camera 
or two. What you can do now, let's see, I can go into the in out tab, I can go to the interchange, and I've already got a character here loaded in, and I can just bring my character in like that. And then actually this character is animated, so he's doing his thing, right? And then of course, you know, it's a scene like any scene, so you've got your light, and you can move your light around, you can adjust your lighting like you can in any scene, and that's it. So then the only thing to do really would be if I wanted to make a camera move here. It does that weird thing for some reason, so I'm just going to set this on zero frames. So he's not in T-pose. And then I'll just move this to the end. And then I'm just gonna, let me see one other thing. So let's say I'm on this camera, my rendering camera. I can set the properties to any kind of camera that I want now, because this is my filming camera, right? So it can be any resolution. It doesn't have to match anything. So this is my shot. And looking at this scene, if I wanted to do, let's say, kind of a dolly in on this guy, what I can do is make sure I'm on the skeleton rig and I'm just gonna push him back a little bit. Make sure he's on the ground plane, staying on the ground plane there. And then what I'm gonna do is go back to my camera. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna punch in a little bit. And I can do the same thing here on my camera is I can change the focal length a little bit and tighten up without having to actually move in. And just looking at the edges, make sure I'm not. And then this is just like using a, a regular camera. So actually well, I messed up here. Let me go back. I delete this frame. I meant to be at the zero frame to make those adjustments. So here I'm at the zero frame. So let me pull back here a little bit there like this. Wait, not to have the wall. And then I'll, let me adjust my pitch here on him. And then I'll turn a little bit, maybe this way. Center him a little bit like that. Center up. Now I'll drag my play head. Well, now he's moving. So let me, I messed up there. Okay, why did I do that? Oh, I gotta delete this keyframe. Sorry, I do that all the time. So unfortunately, it's one of my bad habits. Okay, so now let me move this guy back. Right about there. Okay, and then I can go on the camera, right? So now nothing should be moving. There he is. Okay, so now I'm going to just drag that to the end, and I'm just going to do like a dolly in shot thing on my camera. So I'm just going to do nothing too dramatic. Maybe like there. And then I'll maybe I'll pitch it down a little bit. I mean, you can you can really play around with this and a little closer, make it a little more dramatic. Maybe he's mad. Okay, so now if I hit play, we've got our scene. And it's as simple as that. And you can, like I said, you can still play around with the lighting. The lighting might not be in the right exact spot. So let me check that real fast, the lighting here. So if I go to top view, I'm not sure which direction the sun is coming, but make sure I'm on my light. And then you can use any light you know you want, but let's say I want the light more over here. Why is that light moving? I don't want it animated, hold on. That's my, okay, so there we go. Okay, so now let's say my light's over here. I'm just turning my scroll wheel. I can have the shadow maybe coming more from this side. Okay, now what I'll do, this is the last thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna jump back into camera view to see what I'm seeing. Oh, look what happened. I, I killed the, the uh, by having the lighting. See the lighting difference? So, cause I'm lighting the planes, right? Let's take this into VPR and you see this line here that tells me that my image isn't lined up 100%. But you see how by playing with the lighting, you can bleed that out. So like right there, you can barely see the line. So this here is the wall plane back here and this is the ground plane. But you see how just in the lighting, you can hide it pretty much. Like you can't even really see it right there. What I would do is actually I could go back into the projection camera and line this up a little bit better. What I'm gonna do is just gonna hide that line a little bit with, and then let me go into VPR here and see, you'll see it even more. Let's see what it looks like. I notice now I see some reflection here and that can't be right. So let me go on to, how can I have any reflection on that? Specular, is that causing it? Oh, just that little bit of specular did that. So the only thing I would do is maybe line up the projection camera a little bit more to hide that line. But here you really can't even notice that it's not maybe a part of the field or something like that. And then you hit just play and then you've got your render. You can't really appreciate it. But I'll go ahead and render this out. I hope you found this helpful. This is just kind of a quick and dirty introduction into the camera projection mapping, which I think is really an awesome feature and really creates a sense of realism in a 3D scene. So take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.